She's the owner of Tessa Bella Digital, and she has helped hundreds of industry leaders increase their business through social media marketing. Please help me welcome Tessa Bella Jelton. Oh, is that the best you can do? Come on, give Tessa Bella a round of applause. A real one. All right, our next speaker is a YouTube expert and successful real estate agent. His team sales topped $25 million last year, and he has 13,000 subscribers on YouTube. Give it up for Matt Layton. <laughs> Next up, you've already heard from her. She's an expert agent and salesperson. She sells over 200 homes a year through referrals alone. Welcome back, Lana Rodriguez. She's a brand relations manager and director of business development for Main Street Home Loans. She's a master of building a brand through social media. Welcome to the stage, Raquel Boris. Finally, he's the CEO of Allied Title and Escrow, has received multiple prestigious awards for fast business growth. Please welcome our moderator, Latney Me. All right, all right, thank you so much. All right, how are you guys doing today? Are you having an amazing time? Obviously you are. Um, great to be here. Don't worry about that, thank you very much. Look at that, it's called teamwork, guys. That's what this panel's on. It's on teamwork. So first of all, really excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I uh, look forward to learning some amazing things from them today. So I'm just going to jump around. You've got some great social media influencers and in multiple different social media verticals. So first off, Tessa, you've got an amazing story. She's only 23 years old. She started flipping 23 homes a year at age 18. Tell us how you started. You're 23 of all the success. Give us the story because I think a lot of people find it interesting. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm from Arizona. Um, I went to Arizona from Oregon to go to ASU. And I was 18 at the time managing a little crazy coffee shop. And I had this idea. I was watching HGTV, which I loved. <laughs> and um, Flipper Flop was like my favorite show that I had ever seen. I watched it religiously. And I loved the idea of flipping houses. So I'm kind of the person by nature that when there's something I want, I just go and do it. I don't care what hoop I have to jump through. My friends call me scrappy because I just like to get out there and I'm like, I'm going to make it happen. So I had this concept. I wanted to start flipping houses and I did. I had a friend of mine who had some money from um, previous like business pursuits. And I was like, all right, this is my opportunity. I'm going to create this whole pitch deck and a pitch in this amazing idea. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I made it sound very convincing. I guess that was my start of my sales career was selling myself as this person that was going to be able to do this. So that's exactly what I did. And he was like, all right, let's take a chance. Let's do it. Um, gave me some funding to really kick it off. And that's when everything started. So the first year, I was 18 years old, flipped 23 homes in central Phoenix, mostly like historic neighborhoods was kind of my niche, my expertise at the time. Um, and then from there, I was going to ASU for computer science and marketing at the same time and really started diving into the marketing world. I had an internship that quickly developed into a um, marketing director role out of after like a week by kind of accident and um, started generating business for them. I totally redid a website, social media campaigns, launched these ads, and we doubled their business. They were like, what did you just do? And I was like, I don't really know. <laughs> um, but what I did know was I just understood how to generate leads. I love studying human psychology and observing people. And that's what I took into just about any industry is I, well, okay, I can generate leads here. So I'm gonna do the same thing for real estate. And um, that's when I started to kind of build into more residential resale. And that's kind of how it all started. Awesome. And your focus mainly is on Instagram. So tell us a little bit about Instagram, how the agents here can utilize that, and kind of how you build your business. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big fan of Instagram. In 2018, about 80% of my closed business came from like organic Instagram strategy. But I truly believe everything you do on social media, there's two main parts to it. I think of the first part as your presence. It's important to think about your social media, Instagram particularly, 
as a place to display what you can do, show it off a little bit. I always say my Instagram story is my own personal reality show until I'm like Ryan and I have my own. Um, so in the meantime, I'm gonna be highlighting the things that I want people to recognize, the things that I want people to know me for, and I'm gonna use it as a way to create authoritative content so that people see me as an expert. And that is the fastest way to shortcut something. So one way that I really took that to heart was as a young person, a lot of the objections that I'd run into was that I didn't have as much experience or that I hadn't been in the industry as long as these other people. And I was like, well, I can't do anything about that. I can't speed up 40 years. So the only way that I could was to have this really amazing presence online where I shared a lot of value and I connected with people. I created this online community. So that was half of it. The second half is again that scrappy part. I brought that same energy into what I was doing on social media and I didn't just sit there like a sitting duck hoping for people to say, hey, I wanna sell my house. I went out there and connected with people. You have this opportunity to connect and DM and message and send videos back and forth like Craig was saying with people on social media and you can get extremely focused on who you wanna work with. So my big tip for using Instagram for your business is to really identify the people that you wanna connect with come from a place of value, but then don't be afraid to ask for the connection. Put yourself out there and really put yourself in front of the people that you want to do business with or that you want to get referrals from. Awesome. Tessa Bella, two A's, right? Two A's. On If you want to follow her on Instagram, you can learn a lot. All right, we've got Matt here. I'm just going to come right down the line. So Matt, successful agent in this area. Amazing follow, amazing videos on YouTube, if you don't know about it. He was telling me a stat in the back about the length of video, which is probably pretty shocking. Matt, tell us about YouTube and the length of videos and what you've been do up to. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, thanks again for, uh, for having me here. And one of the reason we were talking about the length of video is because a lot of agents are like, well, my attention span isn't that long. Well, I don't. I don't have 30 minutes to sit down and watch a video. So what I was saying in the back is I have a video, I have videos that are two minutes long, I have video, that's $26,000 into the Wells accounts. Um, and one of the deals, it was a referral. So what I found is that I don't like driving 45 minutes, who here likes driving 45 minutes for a showing? No one, perfect. I don't like doing that. I want to leverage my time. So. What I like doing is referring out deals and then having a check come in from a deal I didn't even know about uh, like three months later. So I think the biggest misconceptions and people keep DMing me and say, hey, do you ever get any uh, leads from YouTube? Do you ever get any business from YouTube? And YouTube is essentially Google for video. It's like, hey, do you, do you ever get any leads from Google? Like the, the old Google machine? Of course. And what a fantastic way to brand yourself as an agent. So for me personally, those that know me, everything I do is Arlington, Virginia. It's all Arlington, Virginia, and it's all condo related. So if you find yourself doing deals in neighborhoods you don't prefer, price points you don't prefer, I think YouTube is a perfect way to tell the market who you are and what you specialize in. So if you're thinking, maybe I should do video marketing, I don't know what to do it about, the biggest tip I have for you is choose the 10 biggest questions, the 10 biggest problems that your clients have and answer those questions. And on another note, choose your top five favorite neighborhoods and do a video about those neighborhoods just walking through. You don't, don't come up after, after this and ask me what type of camera I use. Just, just use your iPhone. It's not that hard. Do a video about Turnberry Tower or about um, your favorite neighborhood in DC, whatever has the highest price point. I think that's a fantastic way to get out in front of buyers that are potentially looking for that. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what's your, uh, what's your, um, what's the word up? To find you, how do they find you? It, to find me it, very easily at the Matt Layton. Um, search YouTube, Instagram. I'm on all those platforms. But I do, I, I do like when I watch my favorite movie all the time is Brady Fart. Um, and I remember watching that movie being like, man, it's already over. And then I looked and it was three hours long. So if you have great content, you can watch it forever. Yeah, people will watch if you hook them. Love it. All right. Next, we have Lana. She's dominated Facebook. Um, she was telling me some awesome stories about how she was new to the area that she went in and kind of how she built her personal page, but also her business page, and how she stalks people on Facebook. Tell us about that, please. 
Yeah, sure thing. So Brian and I we were brand new to the area, and I had a little Facebook profile, nothing, nothing, nothing special. And I had to identify very, very quick how I'm going to brand myself in the new agent Colorado Springs area. Uh, there were 3,500 back then licensed agents, and I created a brand new profile, personal profile. And what I started doing, I started simply adding people, anyone I meet, um, because believe it or not, five years ago I did not know what CRM is. I just got discovered about three, three years ago, you know, client relations management systems. So Facebook for the longest time was my CRM. Anyone who I meet, instead of taking their business card, I was like, hey, let's connect on Facebook. And it was a very, very easy way. Uh, once again, remember, I did not like to be sold. So when we become friends on Facebook, it's uh, nothing, nothing behind it, right? So currently, I have 5,000 friends. I'm completely maxed out. So if I have to add anyone, um, I have to delete people. I have to scroll through. Now, people have the perception that Facebook is, oh, is this privacy account? I'm going to have my family and have my pictures of my cats. <laughs> You're just a cat, cat subject. But no, absolutely not. None of us should see Facebook as a privacy platform. It's a lead generation marketing exposure platform. That's how we have to see it. Um, another thing what I have learned that I do, I have created a private Facebook, Facebook group for my clients only. Okay. And currently there are 750 active participants. And what it does for me, it gives me opportunity to directly market to my sphere. Right. And once again, um, I don't know if you guys heard it before, I used to post a lot of real estate content and some people just remove me because they don't want to see that or they unfollow you and then you're like on the bottom of their feed, right? So I really, really like pre present myself in a very organic way and it works. It really works, guys. Um, tell us about the stalking. Stalking. Okay, so I, I have to admit I stalk everyone. Well, not you guys, but I stalk my teammates. Okay, not like I'm paranoid, but I'm always sleep with one eyes open and I stuck my clients because most of my clients are very committed. But uh, once again, I have to double check what they're doing. And Facebook has this great feature. It, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? It's just, buyers are liars and it's just, it's just, it is what it is. So Facebook has this feature when you're a friend with somebody and they post something in one of the groups, and we're talking about yard sale groups, so I wanna, I wanna get back on that. Um, I get notified, this person posted something in the yard sale group. I immediately look up what they have posted, and for example, if it's a new client whose furnace just broke, I am the first one to find out, I'm the first one to reach out to the client, or get on my buyer special, hey, have you reached out to your client after the closing? Because look, their shit is broken, we need to follow up immediately, right? Um, so things like this, um, and it actually works very, very well. Now that's my little trick. My team does not know that I'm doing that. And also, uh, no, 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 they're not here. Uh, and also when somebody like, remember that, that the Backstreet Boys concept, when I liked, they, everybody else seen, oh, Lana like this. So I just use these small little hacks to, to kind of help me, to help me in day to day. I love it. Um... In terms of, you know, I get the question all the time, should you create a personal page, a business page? Can you speak a little bit more about that? Do you have both? What do you do? Sure thing. So here's the thing. If we're going to talk about Facebook business page, um, the way it is structured, the way the Facebook algorithm is, if you don't pay for the ads, okay, we're talking about not boosting ads, but strategic marketing ads, like your post is going to be on the bottom of the feed. It's just the way it works. Nothing personal. Facebook has to make money too, right? where on a personal page, the engagement of a cute, popular post always gonna go in the top of your feed and your friend's feeds, right? So if there's an like, announcement, for example, Brian and I, my husband and I, we did a funny uh, Christmas video. We uh, had a newborn baby and our daughter was like not liking it. So I saw that, actually I saw the original on Instagram and I just copied it and we did it and that particular page post got a thousand likes on my Facebook and personal. Now I know for the fact if I would have posted it on my business page, I probably would have to pay like, I don't know, to get how much thousand likes, like probably a couple hundred bucks, right? So Facebook and Instagram are the only platforms that lets you organically post your content and do a free marketing. Like there is no limit. You can, there is a limit. As a matter of fact, if you're going to start adding people, uh, Facebook is going to block you. I've been blocked uh, or put in a Facebook jail, what do you call it, uh, two times. So don't do that. Don't be super aggressive because I think you are not a human. Uh, but yeah. But one thing, um, 
Are we going to come back to me? Because I want to share something. Go ahead, go ahead. OK, all right. So <clears throat> this, is, this is a very interesting trick, what I learned in the beginning of my career. I got my first listing, and I was like, ah, great. What do I do now? Well, Colorado Springs is full of yard sale pages. Colorado Springs wife's yard sale pages. Army wife yard sale pages. So I joined all these yard sale pages. And you have to designate one evening a week, and let's say maybe from 5 to 7. And what I did, I cross-posted that listing of mine on all these pages. And we're not talking about the link. We're talking about like real pictures. So it looks nice. So people can click through it. And that's how I actually got my first buyer from that particular post. It was an army wife, they just PCS, PCS means military relocated to Colorado Springs. She's like, hey, is this available? I'm like, of course it is. She's like, can we go see it? I was like, yeah. Uh, sounded very exciting and actually it worked. Uh, because a lot of real estate agents do not use this as a platform, but as long as you do it at a specific time when people are at home and at work and actually not thinking about work and <clears throat> prospecting on Facebook, it works. I mean, I think what's interesting about this is you get all these little tips, little hacks. They add up if you're willing to do them. All right, jumping over here. We've got Raquel here. Now, she came into this area working for Main Street and helped build their brand and coincidentally also built her own personal brand. Tell us about how you kind of did that, what you did for the company and for yourself when you were building your brand. Um, so before anything, can I get a show of hands of how many people are actually on LinkedIn and active? Okay, good, because I think a lot of people um, don't realize the potential there is with LinkedIn. We're still kind of like in the infancy stages. So for me, um, I had started on LinkedIn, I think, four or five years ago, and I just was super consistent. And when it came to our company starting, and we just started in January, um, you know, they hired me as their brand relations and social media manager because I already had a following. I already kind of was, you know, I guess starting my own personal brand so they knew how important it was for brand awareness. So they're like, Raquel, with your connections, with your influence, we need you to promote our company. And here we're eight months in, almost a year actually, and we've done extremely well and people recognize us. I know that it's a lot of value for our loan officers because when they go out and try to connect with real estate agents, you know, people want to know what the company, you know, Main Street Home Loans. Oh, I've heard of them. I see you guys all over social media. Um, but it's kind of funny because as I was doing that, obviously it was putting me out in front of a lot of people. I started kind of creating my own personal brand and I've actually now been helping our loan officers with their social media. I have a lot of people reach out to me. They DM me all the time on LinkedIn. Hey, can you give me some tips? Cause I see you're doing video and that's the thing too with LinkedIn. I think people are, I don't know if you guys are starting to realize how no, you know, obviously nobody wants to be sold to all the time, right? So when I was doing Main Street Home Loans branding, I also had to bring in my personal side into it. So I started doing more videos that were comical, people were, you know, paying attention. And I noticed, it was just all trial and error, that people want to see who you are. They want to see your personality. They want to see that you're authentic, that you're just being you. So then I started just putting more video content out there that was insightful. There were many times that I would, I would do videos. So I did a 31 day challenge, for instance. There was no alcohol in yoga every single day. I documented that 31 days in a row on my LinkedIn. And my engagement and my following increased like crazy. But people, like they, they're craving to see like the human piece of this. And that's the thing is I know everyone here, digital marketing and technology, which is great. But at human nature is we still want to have a connection with that person. We want to know who you, you know, who your real estate agent is, like who you are, who you want to work with. And so I'm kind of, for whatever reason, I've managed to bring that element into it. And people are, are connecting with it. They're resonating with what I have to say. And it obviously helps our brand, you know, with our company. But people want to know who you are. It makes a lot of sense. So I'm with Allied Title. Um, we have a guy named Mike Madigan. He has a video series, Close with Mike and you'll never be Madigan. If you go to close at allied.com, the whole key of it is to be as ridiculous and stupid as we can be because that's when people remember you. And we have people reaching out to us all the time being like, hey, can I shoot the next video with you? Another good uh, video series to follow, the Sky Group, Barack and Anna and them, they have an amazing group of videos too that you should check out. So we've got a couple more minutes. So the question is, if there's one piece of advice that each of you guys 
could share with people out there banked on all your different social media outlets, what would it be? Um, so I'd say two things, consistency and add value. It's all about value. <laughs> I mean, I think everyone on here can, can admit to that, but those are the two things that I'm just like, I'm telling people all the time. <laughs> Perfect. So do not have your Facebook profile in a private setting because once again, somebody mentioned um, that you are going to be Googled. If a new client wants to see who you are, you're going to be Googled and Facebook is actually one of the top feeds that pop up. So have your profile very professional, very family oriented because most likely they're going to check it out and don't, uh, don't forget about the Facebook live videos. We didn't touch on that and there's a power behind it. Do not um, take advantage of that and don't go be doing Facebook lives every other day because people are simply going to get annoyed. But if there's a message you want to relate or there's a momentum you want to uh, make sure your clients see that, um, this is a quick little story. So I'm the kind of person I fire somebody and then go cry about it. True story happens every time, but I just feel so sad. And we had to let go of an employee last November, right? Right before Thanksgiving. It was just that we had to do it. And, you know, I had this stone in my heart. This person is jobless with no income for Thanksgiving holiday. I went to my husband. He's like, no, you just have to be tough. Like, ooh, she had to go. I was like, yeah, of course. So this morning, I wake up and I go down. And my husband is with our kids. Yeah, he's like shaking his head. Uh, so I just said, I look, you know what? I'm going to go to my Facebook friends because no one wants to listen to me. And sure thing enough, I go on Facebook Live, I do this Facebook Live video, how, how heartbroken I am that we let this person go. It's the first time I did this. I never did this before. And then I just break down and I start crying. This, in three hours, this video had 4,000 views. My phone was blowing up, blowing up. I'm like, are you okay? What's everything? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. It was just like a moment. I'm sorry. So people actually really, really took it into consideration because what happens when you do a Facebook Live People get notified, hey, this person is going live. They're thinking that you have something important to say. So use that message wisely. I think it's, it's, I think, I think it's a great tool. Yeah, I think the one thing to take away from video marketing is to be as personable and relatable as possible. If I'm watching your Instagram story and you're doing a walkthrough of an open house, I don't give a shit about your open house. Like, what I care about is how's your dog doing today? Like, what's your, what's your dog, what's your baby? Is your baby eating tonight or what? Like, I think people want to relate with other people on social media, and guess what? Your followers know you're a real estate agent. Like, you don't need to be selling 100% of the time, so I think stories and video marketing is a great way to be yourself and relate to other people that have the same interests as you. Those are all amazing, I'll keep it short. Um, my one most important tip for you is to get over yourself. I think that's the most important thing and hold yourself to relentless accountability. If you want something, then get it and hold yourself accountable. Don't be easy on yourself, don't be soft on yourself. Treat yourself the way you would an agent or somebody on your team that you want them to start performing. You're gonna lay down the law and you're gonna hold them to it. So do the same thing for yourself and don't get too wrapped up thinking, oh my gosh, somebody thinks my hair is messy or I look too fat in this. Just get over yourself and start doing it. I love it. Well, thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our shows. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching our video. I hope you liked it. Give it a quick like below and comment and share. We'd love your feedback. For more videos like this, click here. And to subscribe, click here. <laughs>